Amen. Last week, we began to talk about something that the title of it was Original Design, and we're continuing in that vein. Last week, we talked about God's original design or his original plan for what church should look like, what church should be like, and what Christians should function in that. This week, you know, um, we're going to continue in that vein, but on another topic. Whenever something is built or created in this natural realm, the original design or purpose or function is huge in regard to that. And if it stays in that lane, it's healthy. And what it, all that it was built to do and all that it was created for, it accomplishes it by staying in that, line, in that lane. But if the original design is ignored, it always leads to breakdown. It always leads to premature wear out. Uh, it, even this, it leads to frustration in our life. You know, when um, Jill and I got married, and I know some of you are going to give me a little feedback on this, but she brought way more to the table than I brought to the table. How many of you are with me on that? She was, um, but one of the things that she brought to the table is she brought a mid-70s, uh, mid-70s Honda Civic. How many of you remember what a mid-70s Honda Civic looked like? Mid-70s. They were like one of the first ones that came over from Japan, and the mileage on them was incredible. And they were cars that, that you, could, you could squeeze. They were built for four. It was a squeeze to get, it was a, they were built for five. It was a squeeze to get four people in them. But if you put five in them, nobody was comfortable in the car. Well, we got married in Waco, Texas, Jill and I, and she had a Honda Civic. And Honda Civics got incredible gas mileage, but they had no room to haul anything. There was no space in them to haul anything. And so we didn't have a lot naturally. And what we knew that God had called us to move to San Diego. How many of you know San Diego is a good place to be called to move to? And so we knew that the Lord wanted us to move to San Diego. And so we didn't have a lot naturally. And so we kind of assessed everything we had naturally and realized that we couldn't get it in our Honda Civic. And so I had the idea that I was going to build a homemade trailer that we would hook to the Honda Civic and we would pull it to San Diego and my cousin was in town for my he came in early for my wedding and he said well for your wedding present I got a set of axles and some tires that you could use and bolt onto the bottom of it so I made this homemade wood trailer and we filled it up some of you are shaking your head at me and I don't fully understand that but I made this homemade trailer my wife goes over to the DMV to get a license plate for it. And they said, well, what kind of a trailer is it? Is it a cargo trailer? Is it a hauling trailer? She said, it's a homemade trailer. And they, and they, they sold her the plates or they gave her the plates. But what, but you think about it is the solution to me was to build this homemade trailer and uh, my reasoning was that I knew that when we got to San Diego, God had called me to start a business. And so I, we, we would put all of our stuff in it to get there. And then once we got there, I would operate my business out of this trailer. There was just one problem. And the problem was this, that when we filled the trailer up with all of the stuff and hooked it to the Honda, it weighed more than the car. And so we hooked it up and, and, you know, to me, I don't get discouraged very easy. And so we hooked it to the car and we took off to San Diego with our homemade trailer with all of the belongings in it. And it was crazy. It would take us like a half a mile to build up speed on the highway where, you, you know, you were just like, come on, baby, get a leg out. Come on. How many? And when we were going over the mountains... Oh my gosh, I felt like bicycles were passing us. How many of you know what I mean? But praise the Lord, we got there. How many of you know God is good? He's good. And, but the car 
was never designed, it was never designed to handle that. And we got there and, and, um, and I didn't realize that by putting that much weight and pulling it with that much weight that our gas mileage went from near 40 miles an hour to somewhere around 20 miles an hour because it was just not built to do that. And, um, and so we got there and, and I remember we got there and we got everything loaded. And what I noticed was, is the car started smoking more and more and more. And I'm like, man, this is smoke. And so I start checking the oil. And before long, I'm going through a quart of oil a month in this car. And then not long after that, I'm going through a quart of oil a week. And my, when Jill said you'd start it up, she'd say, wow, that thing's really smoky. I said, baby, we're doing the neighborhood a favor. We're killing the mosquitoes. How many of you know what I'm saying? And, um, and so what happened is, is the car wore out because it was never designed to do what we were doing with it. There was nothing wrong with the car, but it was never designed to do what we were doing with it. And so it broke down and it didn't even last as long as it was supposed to. And I remember we eventually we gave it, there was a college kid in the, in the church and he didn't have any money and he didn't have a car. And so we gave the car to Jerry, his name, Jerry Prinzo. We gave the car to Jerry and Jerry lived on a hill. And, um, and one day he went out and got in the car, started the car up and started going down the hill and the brakes went out on it. And when the brakes went out, he was going toward a main street that was in front. He bailed out of the car and right when it got to the, right when it got to the street, a semi ran over the top of it. <laughs> that was the end of the Honda. How many of you know what I'm saying? <laughs> in our lives, generally speaking, God has incredible promises for our lives in every area of our life. But whenever something's not right, whenever something is wearing out, whenever something is frazzled or broke, we must always go back to original design. We must always go back and say, okay, am I functioning right now in a manner that is not original design? God, you know, you stop and you think about it, is that really what it means is, God, what do you say about this area that is broken, it's wore out, or it needs fixed? What do you say because I'm open? And today what I want to talk about is original design, and the topic is, I'm going to call it too strong, too strong. The number two, but then strong there are times that God supernaturally delivers us out of problems in our life, but then there are times that he strengthens us to grow through the problem. He will supernaturally deliver us, but then there are other times that he will strengthen us so that we grow in it and we grow through it as we're moving on in our life. Too strong is twofold. God is for me. God is with me. God is in me. But realize this, if I believe that, the, that God is at work in me, his strength will cause me to overcome anything that I face in my life. And I think today as Christians, we view God as being with us when we don't have to go through things, but realize this, you can be in the middle of God's best for your life and you're gonna go through things because there's some times in your life that he will get you out of them and there's other times that he will grow you through them. But the key is, is he wants you to not just be one dimensionally strong, he wants you to be too strong. See, if we have a a mindset that problems, adversity, having to go through difficult things in our lives sometimes, that there's something's wrong and we shouldn't have to do it in our life, is we've got to back up to original design or we're going to live disillusioned. That is an American mindset, not a biblical mindset. 
It is an American mindset. And what I have noticed is that sometimes with some pe people, they go through things and it's painful, it's difficult, it's unjust, and it's unfair. And they act like God let them down because they're having to go through it. Excuse me, God's with you in it. And if he didn't deliver you out of it, he's going to give you the strength to overcome in it and you're going to grow through it. Are you with me? Are you, and, and I think that, you know, when you use the word strong, it means a lot of things to a lot of different people. God's answer to adversity is always, yes, help. Yes, lifting. Yes, comforting. But equally, he wants to help us grow strong in it and while we're going through it. He wants to help us to do that. Yes, we pray. As Christians, we pray. But then we do something. I, you know, my wife's egging me on right up here on the front row. I said, yes, we pray. I'm going to try that one more time. I said, yes, we pray. We're at church. Okay. Yes, we pray. But then we do something. We have to, we have to do something. You know, maybe, and I don't know what it is, but maybe it might be renewing our mind by changing the way we think in a particular area. Maybe God might challenge us to do the opposite of what we feel like doing at the moment. Maybe he might speak to us about picking up something and letting go of something else in our life. God is incredibly personal. So the sky is the limit as to what he might lead us to do. But realize we will pray and then he will always lead us to do something. He'll lead us to do something. I remember... I've shared this story before, but way back, I think I was uh, low 30s, and I had never had back, back problems at all in my life, and I threw my back out. And, and it was weird to me because I'd never had back problems. You say, well, what do you mean by you threw your back out? I could not get off the floor. I called my wife from my cell phone in the driveway hanging over a wall and said, can you help me? I can't get in the house. And I remember I prayed. I said, God, I just believe. How many of you believe the Lord can heal a back? Yeah. Four of you. That's really awesome. I said, how many of you know God can heal your back? Yeah. So I prayed and I said, God, I just, I'm, and I was on my back for like three days on my back. Couldn't get off the floor for three days. And I was praying, God, I need you to heal my back. Well, a buddy of mine, and you know him, is James DeMello. James DeMello, I'm praying, I'm saying, God, I want you, I need you to heal my back. And my buddy called me, and he says this to me. He said, how many of you know James? How many of you know James will tell you the truth? He'll tell you the truth. James was Mr. Teen USA, so he was a bodybuilder. He was like third or fourth runner up to um, Mr. America. He was a bodybuilder. And so James gets me on the phone and he says, you know what your problem is? It's your core. You need to work out. You're getting older. It's your core. <laughs> I'm like, pray for me. Goodbye. How many, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> you know, it was an inconvenient truth to a problem in my life. Realize God will never ask us if it's convenient he'll speak to what lifts us and we got to get past our feelings to where we're open to him right. we have to get past our feelings and so you say what did you do did you do your core no i did not do my core i went to the chiropractor and after about two weeks with the chiropractor i was functioning again until a year and a half later the same thing happened again and there's my phone ringing it's james DeMello, and I'm like, should I answer this call? How many, you know what I'm saying? Did you learn anything? <laughs> I'm like, so eventually, but, it, but I had to stop and say, okay, God, what are you saying for me to do? I want you to turn in your Bibles to Isaiah chapter 40. Isaiah 40. And the Israelites are in a tough spot. And in Isaiah 40, verse 26 through verse 31, this is God speaking to them. And he said this. He said, look up into the heavens. Who created the stars? There's a question mark there. He brings them out like an army, one after another, calling each 
by its name. Because of his great power and incomparable strength, not a single one is missing. Verse 27, O oh, Jacob, how can you say the Lord does not see your troubles? O oh, Israel, how can you say that God ignores your rights? Have you never heard, have you never understood the Lord, the everlasting God? Think about that statement, the everlasting God. God never had a beginning. He never had an end. He's an everlasting God, the creator of all of the earth. He never grows weak or weary. No one can measure the depths of his understanding. He gives power to the weak and strength to the powerless. Even youths will become weak and tired and young men will fall in exhaustion. Now look at this, verse 31. But those who trust in the Lord will find new strength. They will soar high on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and they will not faint. I want to just unpack this for a moment. And what I want you to notice is number one is they are facing trouble. There's adversity and there's a mindset. God speaks to them and he said, you don't think I see this. You don't think I know about this. You don't think that I can see what's going on right now in your life. And in verse 26, he basically said, I want you to look around at nature and see how big I am. I want you to realize that I never had a beginning. I never had an end, that I am the God that created you and made everything else around you. And I see your troubles. And then he said this, that God doesn't grow weary, that God does, he does not grow faint. But then in verse 29, he said that God is a strengthener, that what God does when we go through trials, when we go through things, even if he comes through quickly or if it is a delay, that what he wants me to know him as, as the strengthener of my life, that God is a strengthener. And then notice verse 30 and 31, he talks about two types of strength. He said, the young men, they faint and they grow weary and they get exhausted. In other words, natural strength has its limitations. But he said, those that trust in the Lord, he said that God infuses them with strength and there's no limit to their strength in their life. See, it, there's two types of strength. There's a natural strength and there's a spiritual strength. And in America today, we have learned to depend on our natural. And what God is saying is you need to go back to original design. And the reason you're so frustrated when you have trouble, when you have problems, and when things don't go the way you want is because you can't fix them and you were never intended to fix them. My strength was intended to work through you in that weakness to fix that problem. Naturally is good, but there's limitations and it's controlled by natural things. Spiritually, it's supernatural. It's an infusion of something God calls new strength and it's greater than natural alone. Notice he compared and he said, mount up with wings like an eagle. And he said, why would God use an eagle? You know that eagles are one of the highest flying birds. They claim that they can fly 10,000 feet. So that's almost two miles up. When an eagle sees a storm, it has the ability to go over it. It has the ability to go higher than the storm. And then he said that they would run and not be weary. A natural doing, but a strength that is beyond I'm doing it all by myself. The context here is troubles, it's problems, it's adverse things. And God's answer is I'm going to teach you how to tap into a strength that is greater than natural alone. It's greater than natural alone. And natural is fine, I'm not minimizing it, but it has limitations. God's strength is there causing me to overcome in spite of problems. There are times that God delivers us out, and then there are times that God strengthens us in, and he grows us in, and he grows us through it. And we have to realize that this is his original design. 
our world, and I don't want to rain on anybody's parade, but as our world moves farther and farther away from the gospel and the truths of the Bible, understand it is going to get harder and harder. And God's answer isn't shelter us from it, but grow stronger in it so you can stand up in the midst of a world that needs people to be a light in a dark place. That is God's answer to it. It's not run and hide. You know, we are going to be victims. We're going to be victims. We're going to face things that aren't fair and that aren't right. And we're going to go through them. We're going to have to go through those things. But am I going to allow being a victim to give me a victim mentality? Or am I going to believe God is with me and I can overcome this thing and even grow through this thing? I would venture to say right now, that some of us have things that are just like, Lord, I don't like this. God, this is difficult. God, this is hard. You pray and you believe the Lord to deliver you and to do what he does, but equally realize that original design is he wants to give you strength right now, right where you're at, right in the situation. He wants to infuse you with strength while you're facing it. You know, this was the biggest difference between the Israelites that got delivered out of Egypt and the Israelites that went into the promised land. The Israelites that got out of Egypt, if you look, is they had a victim mentality that they would not let go. And it stopped them from going in to what God had promised for their life. But then their children came up after them and they went into what God had promised because they didn't see, they didn't have a victim mentality. They had a God mentality in their life. The parents couldn't let go and grow and believe. And so what happened is, is their children had to go in. You know, where, where we're, I think sometimes in our life we can look and say, God, I'm here. God knows where we're at. But realize that God wants to take us from where we're at to what he's got for our life, but he wants to grow us. God isn't going to deliver us from everything that is uncomfortable or unfair. But his desire is to strengthen and to grow us through everything that's difficult, uncomfortable, and maybe unfair. I realize we live in a world today that it's all about fairness. As long as we live in a fallen world, unfair things are going to happen to good people. Unfair things that are not just. You know, in, in Genesis chapter 50, verse 20, do you remember the story of Joseph? The story of Joseph is, is God gave him a dream. He was going to be a leader and that he was going to lead. uh, Basically, all his brothers were going to bow before him and he was going to be a leader. And the Bible says immediately after that dream for 21 years, he went from thrown in a well to being a slave to being thrown into prison. And finally, the day comes where his brothers come before him. And he said this, and I think this is a huge reflection of his heart in Genesis 50, 20. He said this, you intended to harm me, but God intended it all for good. Look at that statement, all, not half, not 75%. But what somebody else did, he said, you intended it for bad. One translation says for evil, but God intended it all for good. He brought me to this position so that I could save the lives of many people. Notice the word God intended it all all for good. Do you know that when we go through things in our life, it might be difficult, but God intends it all for good. He'll use it all for good. He'll point it all in that direction. One translation, the good news translation, says that God turned it for good. Turned it means at one point it wasn't good, but because they continued to follow, God turned it for good. When God turns something in our life, it turns to a strength and nothing can ever take that from us. Nothing can ever take. When we were looking at something that was hard, we were looking at something that we didn't get. We were looking at something that was difficult and we just stayed, God, I'm going to follow you. I'm going to do what you want. And God turns it. It turns to something in us that nothing, it's our story. It's the fingerprint of God on our life. Look at something Paul said from inside a prison cell 
in Philippians chapter 4, he's in a prison cell, verse 13. He said, I have strength for all things in Christ who empowers me. Now, <laughs> okay, you're in jail. You're in prison. I am ready for anything and equal to anything through him. Now look at this, who infuses inner strength into me. I am self-sufficient in Christ's sufficiency. It's an inner strength. It's an inner strength in our life. It's an inner strength. You know, we've all had people speak against us. We've all had people, you know, oh, they forsook me. Oh, they didn't stand with me. Oh, they, they betrayed me. Oh, they, we've all had that. Look at what Paul said in 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 16. And by the way, 2 Timothy 4 is the last book of the Bible written. This was the book that shortly after this, Paul was martyred. But look at what it says in 2 Timothy 4, 16. He said, the first time I was brought before the judge, no one came with me. Everyone abandoned me. May it not be counted against them. You know, that's a good heart when you say everybody abandoned me, but you pray for them that God just forgive them and let it go. Not God get even with them, but God just forgive them and let it go. But look at what he said then. He said, everybody abandoned me. Everybody forsook me, but the Lord stood with me. And what did he do? He gave me strength so that I might preach the good news in its entirety for all the Gentiles to hear. That was his calling. And he rescued me from certain death. Yes, the Lord will deliver me from every evil attack and will bring me safely into his heavenly kingdom. See, God is, when we're talking about original design, my goal today is I realize that what I'm teaching today is un-American. You say, what do you mean? We Americans do not like things that are uncomfortable. We, we Americans like it. What is Burger King's motto? Have it, my way. Have it my way. How many of you like it your way? Okay, look, we're at church. God is looking. How many of you? We all like it our way. But what God is saying is he's saying, you know, my people, and especially in America today, the original design is there are going to be times that you go through things and I strengthen you in them and through them. And many times the seed to the greatest thing that God has for our life can be found and traced back to a trouble or a problem that we yielded to God in. And when we yielded to him in it, he turned it to a strength and totally transformed our life on the inside. Look at what it says in 3 John verse 2. Dear friend, I hope all is well with you and that you are as healthy in body as you are strong in spirit. Psalms 34 verse 19, the righteous person faces many troubles, but the Lord's comes to their rescue each time. Every time God does. Sometimes it's instant. Other times it's progressive. Other times it's us growing through. God, I'm facing this. I want to get out of this. I want you to just show up. I want you to just do it. But Lord, what I know is you're an everlasting God. You know me better than I know myself. That you have a plan for not just my comfort of today, but for my life of tomorrow. And because you have a plan of my life tomorrow, and I trust you as I'm going through this, I'm believing you to get me out of it. But what I am going to do is I'm going to serve you with a good attitude attitude and I'm going to grow while I'm facing this thing that maybe I really don't like because what I know is original design when it comes to being strong is not the absence of problems but your strength shows up in the presence of and in spite of problems in my life. Amen? Proverbs 18 14 says this, the strong spirit of a person sustains them in bodily pain or trouble, but a weak and a broken spirit, who can raise up or bear? You know, when you look, and I'm, I should close. <laughs> when you look at Jesus and the story of Jesus, if you think about it, 
is the greatest blessing that the world had ever experienced. It didn't look like it, and it didn't feel like it. And as a matter of fact, it tells us in 1 Corinthians 2, 8, that had Satan knew what he was doing, he would never have crucified Jesus. He would have never done it. He didn't get it. But realize this, that in the midst, sometimes the greatest blessing God has for our lives can be found in the thing that maybe is the greatest pain in our behind quarters or how many of you know what I'm saying? It can be, it is the, it is the greatest pain. And God is like original design is there are times that God supernaturally intervenes and takes us, but then there are other times that he grows us through it. And my question to us today is this, I'm just going to ask you, how many of us right now would say right now I'm facing some stuff I don't like? Just put your hand up. Just put your hand up. I want to, because I want to pray for you. Put your hand up. Just lift your hand up. God, we come to you today. And Lord, what we clearly see in your word is that original design is we're going to go through things. And part of that purpose is the things that we go through, you're going to teach us how to be strengthened in you. You're going to grow us through it. And Lord, I lift up right now every person that is here. God, I thank you for them. I thank you for your presence in their life. Lord, we purpose right now that we are not going to live for the comfort of today, but we are going to live for the promise of tomorrow. And Lord, I pray your strength and your comfort and your peace right now, whether it's a physical problem, a relational issue, Lord, something that they can't even define. What we know is that you are good that you're an everlasting God. And Lord, I pray for your strength to them and your comfort to them and that their heart is receptive right now in the place that they're at. In Jesus' name, if you agree, say amen. Amen. Do you know that when Jesus was getting ready to leave the earth, he prayed for his disciples and he said this, God, in John 17, I'm not asking you to take them out of the world but I'm asking you to protect them while they're in the world. See, God wants us to know that he wants to protect us, to grow us, and to strengthen us. Sometimes we just want to get out of here. Just get me out of here. You know, in Acts 1, the disciples came to him and said, is now the time? Is now the time? And Jesus said, it's not for you to know the time, but he said, what God wants to give you is power. The power of the Holy Spirit that is going to make you a witness where you're at in the current situation. And I believe today that what God is trying to get us to do is to shift in our mindset. Some people treat God as though he's failed them. Oh God, you've, you let me down. No, what happened is, is it didn't go the way that you thought and you let go of his hand leading you because you got so discouraged in it. And God wants you to get back up and say, Lord, I'm going to take your hand and I'm going to trust that you're leading me because God said he will turn it all for my certain good. All of it for my certain good. How many of you before have ever blamed God for a problem? Put your I, Look, I got mine up. I think all of us, God, this is why couldn't you have just, God's like, God, and God's like, excuse me, but everything that goes on, I'm either going to deliver you or I'm going to grow you through it. But whatever it is, it's going to end. It's going to go to a final outcome down the road that is going to be better for your life than anything you could have ever done yourself. Let's stand to our feet.